This video goes with section 136 of Hansen and Quinn's Greek, an intensive course, and it covers the verb hiemi. It's a long section in Hansen and Quinn from pages 519 to 523, and this is likely to be a long video. Hiemi has these principal parts, hiemi, heiso, heika, heika, hemai, heithane. It means release or hurl or send, and you can tell from all those hyphens that it very, very often appears in compound. So it's best to learn the meanings of the compounds um, as well as the base meaning of this verb. Hiemi is athematic in the first principal part, and it has a mixed aorist for the third principal part. So athematic endings and a little bit of first aorist behavior in the singular and active and indicative. And those are the things we'll go over in this video. So for the present indicative active, we are going to need the long grade and the short grade forms. And here they are, he a in the long grade and he a in the short grade. Remember that the long grade form is for everything singular, everything indicative, and, and active, it has to be all three of those things, and everything else is going to use the short grade stem. So the athematic endings for the present indicative active are these, and when we add them to hiemi with the long stem in the singular and the short stem in the plural, we get hiemi, hies, or hies, which is a contraction of the short stem and the thematic ending, second singular, that you know from thematic verbs, ace. In the third singular, we go back to strictly athematic endings and get hiac with a new movable. In the plural, we get hiemen, hieta, and hiasi. Here, the short stem contracts with the alpha of the ending and we get hiasi and you can't see the epsilon anymore at all. This has recessive accent, which I hope is what you heard me pronounce. Now, just as with the other me verbs, the aorist forms are often quite similar to the present forms and really all you need to change is the very first syllable. So let's see how much that is true with the aorist indicative active of hiemi. I did say that this is a mixed aorist, so instead of the uh, really a long grade stem, we get hake for our singular and indicative and active. And so I'm not going to put the um, thematic endings there, but I have put the athematic endings for the plural. So the aorist indicative active conjugates this way. Heka, hekas, heka, hemen, heta, heisan. What you're seeing there is the augmented tense stem, short tense stem in the plural, and the augmented heka in the singular with the recessive accent. Because of the mixed aorist and because of the augmented short grade stem, the aorist and the present don't really look completely alike, but I think the matching up of the two tenses is going to serve us well in other moods. Let's go on to the middle passive of the indicative, starting with the present. We're going to want the short grade stem because we are no longer active. Here are the athematic endings, and those combine with our short grade stem to make he am I, he is I, he it I, he am I, he is the, and he and I, with that recessive accent that you heard. In the aorist, we'll have the short grade stem. Now that other stem for the mixed aorist is not going to come into play, and we'll use the same middle endings for athematic verbs. And we'll get hemen, hesa, heta, 
Hamitha, Hastha, Hainta. To finish our indicative mood, we need to go back to the first principal part and do the imperfect, where we'll need the past indicative augment along with the first principal part and its endings. So here, we're back to the indicative and we're back to the active, and in the singular then, we will use the long grade stem, and in the plural, we will use the short grade stem. Here are our imperfect athematic endings, and they're going to go on to hiemi this way. Hiem, hies, hie, and hie is actually not using the athematic endings, but is using the thematic third person singular epsilon and contracting that with the short stem to make hie. And then in the plural, we get hiemen, hieta, and hiesan, with the recessive accent that you heard. So a couple of things to take note of. First, I've already pointed out the irregular form in the third person singular of the imperfect indicative active. And notice, too, that you didn't see any separate past indicative augments. That's because that epsilon has contracted with the iota, which was actually already long. There's no way you would see that difference in Greek in the wild. But do notice that the second singular, the first plural, and the second plural look the same as the present indicative active. So be careful about that and use context to help you distinguish. When we go on to the imperfect indicative middle passive, we will use the first principal part, but will no longer be active. So now we're only using the short grade stem with the athematic endings. And that gives us hiemen, hiesa, hieta, hiemetha, hiestha, and hienta. And the accent is recessive. Here again, the past indicative augment is, for all intents and purposes, invisible. So I want to note that the first person plural and the second person plural are identical in form with the present indicative middle passive. And context will have to tell you the difference. Now we move on to the subjunctive mood. The present subjunctive active is not indicative anymore, so we'll be using the short grade and the first principal part with the same subjunctive active endings you've been using for a really long time. And what's going to happen is that the short epsilon of the short grade stem is going to contract with the subjunctive endings. And so what we get is hio, hies, hie, hiomen, hieta, hiosi, with a new movable possible. And that's recessive accent, although it maybe didn't sound like it, because it's recessive accent with the rules for contraction. In the air subjunctive active, we get all the same things, and the result is ho, heis, he, homen, heita, hosi. So here what you see is what I often say about hiemi. If it looks like an ending with a rough breathing, it's probably from hiemi. Or if it looks like an ending with an iota and a rough breathing, it's probably an ending. And here the only difference between the present and the aorist is that iota. So all of the things, all of the forms that you see here in the aorist would probably appear in compounds, but now you can recognize them. In the middle passive for the present subjunctive, we're going to get Again, the short grade stem with the middle passive subjunctive endings that we know, and that's going to result in hiomai, hie, hietai, hiometha, hiestha, hiontai. And you heard there again the contraction in the uh, accent because that epsilon can't really maintain its own integrity in the face of all of those long vowels. In the aorist, we're going to get very similar thing, same endings, and instead of a rough breathing iota, 
con and epsilon contracting into the ending. We just have the rough breathing epsilon. And that gives us homai, hey, heitai, homatha, hastha, and hontai. Now we move on to the present optative. And again, not indicative, so we'll be using the short grade present stem. And the optative athematic endings look like this. So when we add those to that short grade stem, we get he a aim, he a ace, he a, he a amen, he a a ta, or he a a son, with the alternate endings. Hiemen, hieta, hien. And there you heard the recessive accent, but it never goes back um, farther than the iota. The aorist version does the same thing, but without the first principal part, iota. And so we'll get these forms heyen, heyes, heye, heyemen or heymen, heyeta or heyta, heyesan or heyen. Again, they just look like endings with rough breathings, and so that's part of how I see that they're from he, a, me. And the same goes back in the present, where it looks like an ending with a rough breathing iota slapped on the beginning of it. So I think it can be pretty easy to see when a form comes from he, a, me. There's the aorist again. Then if we move on to the optative middle passive, again, back to the first principle part, the short stem ending, there are our athematic endings, and that gives us hie main, hieo, hieta, hiemetha, hiestha, and hienta, with the contraction rules recessive endings. And then in the aorist, we're going to get the same thing, but without the iota of the first principal part. So here we have the athematic optative endings, and we're going to get hemain, heya, heta, hemetha, hestha, hainta. We're almost done with the optative, but I need to tell you that the aorist optative middle of hiemi has some alternate forms where it uses the thematic optative endings, and that rough breathing epsilon is contracted into those thematic endings. So you might see in compound verbs the forms hoita, hoimetha, hoistha, and hointa. So just be aware that those are out there. But we get to move on to participles and I'll give you the nominative and genitive singular hies, hiesa, hien here for the present participle active, and that gives us the stems in the genitive hientos, which gives hient, hieses, which gives hies for the stem, and hientos, which gives hient for the neuter stem. And the accent there is going to be persistent based on that masculine nominative singular, where you can see that the accent wants to stay over the syllable of the ending. The present participle middle passive follows that first and second declension pattern, hiemenos, hiemene, hiemenon. The aorist participles look exactly the same except without that iota at the beginning. So we get heis, heisa, hen in the nominative, which leads to the genitive from which you'll get the stems, hentos, heises, hentos. And then the middle of the aorist participle goes from hemenos, hemene, Hemenon. That lets us move on to the imperative. The present imperative active is going to be again from the first principal part, of course, with the short stem. And we're going to get these forms. He a, which is actually a contraction of the short stem and the thematic present imperative active ending epsilon. Hieto, hieta, and hientone. The accent is recessive, and here you should remember 
that hiete is going to look just like the present indicative active of the second person singular, I'm sorry, the second person plural, and that hien tone could be mistaken for the present participle active genitive plural. The middle passive of the imperative uses the short grade stem and the athematic endings, which gives us hiesa, hiestho, hiestha, and hiestho. And here we need to remember that the both the second person singular and the second person plural look just like their indicative counterparts. The aorist imperative is going to follow the same rules. So the short grade stem for the aorist with the athematic endings, and we get hes, heto, heta, hentone. And again, that third person plural imperative, let them hurl, looks just like the genitive plural masculine and neuter participle active. So be careful about that. In the middle, we're going to get who to start with. So that doesn't follow the rule. What that actually does is take the stem ha and the ending sa, and we're going to lose that intervocalic sigma and contract the epsilon and the omicron together. So unlike most athematic um, verb forms, we are actually going to get a contraction here, and so we'll get who for the aorist imperative middle second singular. But then we get much more regular hestho, hestha, and hesthone. And that leaves us with just the infinitives to learn. The present infinitive active, of course, will come from the first principal part short grade stem plus the ending nigh, and we'll get there the form hienai with fixed accent over the second to last syllable. The present infinitive middle passive, first principal part short grade ending with the ending sthai, and we'll get hiasthai. For the aorist, we'll use that short grade epsilon with a rough breathing and the ending nigh, but we'll really contract it with ni that we're more used to from thematic contexts, and that's what gives us heinai. So the only difference between this infinitive heinai and the infinitive of the verb amy, that is amy I am, is that breathing. So really keep an eye on the breathings. They really do matter. The aorist infinitive middle will take the short grade stem and the ending and apply those much more strictly, and your whole form is hesthai. And finally, that's it. Those are all the distinct forms that are athematic of the verb hiemi. So it behaves as you would expect in some forms, in some moods, in some tenses, but there are some things to look at carefully to make sure that you are recognizing that you're looking at a form of hiemi.